So I'm going to start by going over the, the homework that we had from uh, last time. I think it was on Wednesday we were assigned this homework. Um, we had to say what, what type of function it was. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to write them down. I'll just go over it. Uh, this first one, 1a, was linear. And that's because it was 7 minus 3x, and x is the highest power. So that one was linear. Then this one was a power function, because it could be x to the 1 fifth. So that one's power. This one, anytime we uh, divide a function by another one, it's going to be a rational And then d, our x, or exponent is a variable. So that is going to be an exponential function. On to number two, uh, this one would be a polynomial. And it's a degree of four because four is the highest exponent. Uh, the next one is exponential, and that's because we have a variable as our exponent. This one would be algebraic. And that would be because we have basically the square root of a function or of a polynomial, so we call that one algebraic. This one would be its cube root of z to the seventh. And there's only one thing under here, so this would be a power function. Because that would be z to the seven thirds. 3a is rational. This one. This one you could call a couple of different things. You could call this a polynomial and I wouldn't hate it, but this exponent of a fraction makes me think that it's more of an algebraic function. So I would accept either for that one, even though I spelled algebraic wrong. Part C, this would be a trig function because we have the tangent in there, and D would be logarithmic. Basically, anytime you see a trig function or a log, it's going to be trig or logarithmic, respectively. Number four, also a log function. This one be, would be rational. This one we have a variable in the exponent, so exponential. And then this last one would be a trig function. Because again, there's a trig function. Okay, in exercises five and six, match each equation with its graph. If you're looking at x to the fourth, then it's going to be the one that's the uh, most curved in the least wide. Well, the, the base is going to be the least wide. So this would be uh, h for x to the fourth. It would be f for x to the seventh, and you know that because it starts at the bottom and comes to the top, and it's not the u shape. The u shape is only going to be when it's an even exponent. So that leaves uh, g is our last one. So that's, that was our last homework assignment. Now we're going to move in on to some more examples of uh, increasing and decreasing functions. Looking at the symmetries and all of that. So basically for these ones, if I'm looking at the first function, which is y equals negative x to the third. When I look at that function, I want to go to Desmos and just see what it looks like. 
if I do negative x to the third, we can see what the graph looks like. It's going to be starting up high, drops down to zero, and then kind of evens out and drops down again. So a couple different ways we can look at that, look at this. The first one is, uh, where is it increasing and decreasing? It's dropping from left to right. And in the center, it's hard to tell. But if we zoom in, you'll see that it continues to drop, however slightly. I mean, it's always getting closer and closer to the line, and then it backs down again. So this one is incre uh, decreasing, I'm sorry, decreasing across the entire interval from negative infinity to infinity. So decreasing from negative infinity to infinity. It says, what symmetries, if any, do the graphs have? This is symmetric about the origin. And I think we had some examples like this in our increasing and decreasing. So we had x to the third, and that's where we can see that. This made it negative. So that's what switches it to decrease. And just so you know, you really don't need to know that information. Uh, the graph will tell you everything you need to know. <clears throat> All right, on to number eight. It's negative one over x squared. So if we go back to our graph. do negative 1, then the divided by, you do x to the second. When I look at this, it looks like kind of like a waterfall going over the edge here. And it's going to drop continuously. And if I zoom out, you're going to see that it doesn't match up at the bottom. Like, it doesn't meet up anywhere. And that's because it's undefined at 0. Because if we put a 0 in for x, it would be dividing by 0. So if we look at this uh, for negative 1 over x squared, this is going to be decreasing from negative infinity. to zero, and it's going to be a parenthesis on the end because it never actually touches zero. And then it increases from zero to infinity. Look at the graph. Oops. As if we go from left to right, from negative infinity to zero, it's going down and to the right. So as I move left to right, it goes down, which makes it decreasing. And starting from zero, as I move left to right, it goes back up. So it's decreasing across this interval and increasing across this one. When we look at the symmetry, this uh, left side, if it flips over, it'll match up directly with the right side. It's like if I go to the point where it's negative 5, then negative 5 is negative 0 0.04 is our y value. If I go to positive 5, it's at negative 0 0.04. So the left flips directly over onto the right. If we had folded down the uh, line uh, x equals 0, <clears throat> then you're going to find out that it flips directly over that line or over the uh, 
y-axis. So our line of symmetry would be x equals 0. Number nine, we're just going to change that from negative 1 over x squared to negative 1 over x. And when we look at this one, you can see as it goes from left to right, it increases until it gets to zero. And when it hits zero, it stops. It picks up here, again, just beyond zero, but it's still increasing. But because this uh, doesn't have a value of zero, again, if we plug zero in, it would give us a uh, one, negative one over zero, which you can't divide by zero. So this is going to be increasing from negative infinity to zero and or union zero to infinity. So that just tells us that it leaves the point zero out. We're looking for a, a line of symmetry. A line of symmetry in this case. As soon as I stop drawing dots on the screen. If I look at this one, it looks like this spot is exactly the same as this one. Like if I look at positive 1, it's at negative 1, and at negative 1, it's positive 1. So this actually flips over the line y equals x. So if I was to fold this top half over the line, over the diagonal, it's going to give me a uh, the mirror image, which means it's symmetric about the line y equals x. Okay, last one of these is 1 over the absolute value of x. I'm going to delete the negative here. If I go down into the bottom, in front of the x, if I type abs for absolute value, that doesn't do anything. Uh, <laughs> I need to put uh, push shift and then the slash above the enter and that'll give me an absolute value sign. Now when I look at this one, we have a graph that's increasing from negative infinity to zero, and then from zero to infinity, it's decreasing. So from left to right, it goes up, and from right to left after zero, or from left to right after zero, it goes down. So this is increasing. From negative infinity to zero, and decreasing from zero to infinity.
in our line of symmetry. I'm really having a hard time spelling symmetry today. Is x equals zero. If we look at this graph. You can see that on this line or the y-axis, which is the line x equals zero, if I flip the left side over that line, it would land on the right side. Any questions about those? Okay, right, even and odd, we're not going to do all these. we we'll do a couple of them because I'm going to ask you to do some of these for homework. But in order to find out if a function is even or odd, we always have to find f of negative x and then negative f of x to see if it's odd. But generally, I just start with finding, checking to see if it's even first. So if I check to see if it's even, what that means is I take the original function, in this case, f of x equals 3. If it's even, f of x is going to be equal to f of negative x. Which means if I put a negative x in, everywhere there's an x. In this case, there are no x's, so it just remains 3. These two are equal to each other. So it's even. If it's even, you know it can't be odd. Uh, just to prove that, this would be negative f of x. Which means I put a negative in front of whatever's on this side. So that would be a negative 3. Negative 3 is not equal to 3. So it's not odd. But again, since we knew it was even, we didn't even have to do that. Let's check out number 20. I'm sorry, what did you say? For which, because there's no negative x, there's nothing to plug in. So generally, uh, like you'll see in number 20, when there's an x in the problem, it means that we put a negative x in anywhere there's an x. So on the right side here, there was no x in the original problem. So we can't put a negative x in. So it stays exactly the same. Uh, number 20. We'll start with f of x equals x to the negative fifth. Now, if I plug in negative x in here, that means that this now becomes negative x to the negative fifth. You remember what the negative exponent means? It means that it goes to the denominator. So this is like 1 over x to the fifth. In this case, if I have a negative number raised to an odd value, it keeps it negative. So this would be 1 over negative x to the fifth still. If this was an even number, it would make it a positive x. So this would still be negative x to the, fifth, to the negative fifth. And this <clears throat> is not the same as our original one. So this is not even. Now we check to see if it's odd. To see if it's odd, we put a negative in front of everything and see if it matches up with f of negative x. So I take my original function and I put a negative in front of it. Negative x 
to the negative fifth. This is the same as this one, which makes this an odd function. Let's ever say. Let's try uh, number 22. This one is x squared plus x. So first I go f of negative x. Means I put a negative x in for every x. That's negative x squared plus negative x. Negative x squared becomes positive x squared, because anything squared becomes positive. And this would just stay as plus a negative x, which makes this minus x. If we look at this now, x squared minus x, is not the same as x squared plus x. So it's not even. Now we check to see if it's odd by putting a negative in front of the whole thing. If I do a negative in front of the whole thing, I now have to distribute my negative to both terms. It gives me a negative x squared minus x. Now this negative isn't going to become a positive because we have to square it before we multiply it by negative 1. Order of operations. Remember PEMDAS? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or other versions you may have heard throughout the years. <clears throat> Exponent comes before multiplying. So we would square it before we make it negative. So this stays as a negative x squared minus x. That's not the same as this one. So this would be neither. 